Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am joining Altenu for their June 2019 stamp and die release. I'm showing you a few of the release products here and to see lots of examples and inspiration with these products, head on over to my blog, which is part of the hop and make sure to comment on the blog itself so that you are entered to win lots of prizes from Altenu. Today I'm going to be focusing on this leaf cluster stamp set and it's really wonderful. It's got these seven images of leaf clusters and then lots of really cute and fun little sentiments that you wouldn't always expect from a floral set. I'm going to show you, as always, the inside of this pamphlet because they are so beautiful and well put together. They've got lots of ink inspiration as well as some stamping inspiration. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my first card. Now, obviously these stamps and these images would be wonderful as supplemental leaves for floral images on cards, but today I'm going to make them the star of three of my cards. For my first card, I'm doing a watercolor wash base. And for that, I'm using a really simple technique using Tombow dual brush pens. If you've not seen my Save the Crafty YouTuber video, I will link that here in the top right hand corner if you're interested in that. There's a much more in-depth look at this technique, but basically what I'm doing is taking four Tombow dual brush marker colors and all of the products in these colors are linked in the description. And I basically start out by going from darkest at the top and then ending with the lightest shade, although I do feel like those two first colors could be switched. Uh, but really I'm just making these blocks of color. So I'm just scribbling the marker on there. And then I'm taking a water pen or a water brush, which is basically just one of those paint brushes that are filled with water and when you squeeze them it lets a little bit out and I'm running from the very top of the cardstock to the bottom and because the Tombow dual, dual brush pens react so well with water after I dry it and hit it with my heat tool it gives this really beautiful watercolor wash look and it was the easiest thing to do again if you'd like more information on that I do have that video linked in the description as well. So to cut it down to size, because I did uh, tape it down to my surface just to prov uh, prevent a little bit of warping, I'm going to cut this and trim it down to three and three quarters by five inches. I'm going to take one of the leaf clusters and I'm taking the one that seems to stand tallest and thinnest because I want it to fit completely onto my card. I'm going to be embossing this, so I'm using my Embossing Buddy by Ranger. It's just a bag of powder, basically, uh, that prevents the embossing powder from sticking to where I don't want it to anywhere but where I have stamped. And I am stamping or inking up that stamp in Versamark ink, which is a really sticky, clear ink so that the embossing powder sticks really well to it. I'm using some gold embossing powder and then I'm just using that piece of paper underneath to catch the extra embossing powder. That way I can fold it up and pour it right back in and I don't lose any unused embossing powder. I'm taking my heat gun and you'll see that I do a little bit on the front and the back and that's again just to prevent or to straighten out some of the warping that I get here periodically. I just want it to be as straight as possible and I do get some warping when I am watercoloring and embossing. So here is the finished product. I love the way that the gold looks on top of these greens. Also, the image I chose is tall and thin, so it really draws your eye from the very bottom of the cardstock to the top, so you can really take in that ombre green color. For the sentiment, I used one included from the set. It's I adore you, the end, and I stamped that on the bottom right hand and then added just a few clear droplets and I then adhered it to an A2 size card base and called it done. For my next card, I'm going to be layering some of these stamped images on top of one another, and I need my cardstock to be centered in my MISTI. 
This cardstock is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to be stamping some of the leaf clusters so that they are sort of hanging off of the sides of my cardstock like you see here. So I'm using a repositionable or removable adhesive on the back side of my cardstock. I could use my magnet, but I wasn't sure how far up I wanted these stamps to come. So just to be safe, I'm using the repositionable tape. And it's really nice because it stays put in the misty without having to work around the magnet. And then you can just rub off that adhesive at the end. It comes off perfectly fine, doesn't tear up or pill up any paper. It's one of my favorite te techniques to use when I need my paper to stay in place in my misty. So for my first uh, images, I am using three leaf cluster images in rose quartz, which is a very light pink color of ink by Altenew. And then I'm going to go in for my second layer with a slightly darker color, and this is purple wine. Now I want these leaves to almost look like they're sort of staggered. So some are behind and some are in front. So I'm using these larger leaf clusters so that it looks like you're a little bit closer to these leaves. I'm using purple wine which is in the same uh, mini ink cube set as rose quartz and it's actually too above or too darker than rose quartz so I thought it would be perfect to use for this type of technique. So as you can see it looks like those uh, darker leaf clusters are just a little bit closer to you as the viewer. And here is the finished product. I called this card done because it was super simple and just felt really organic and like it was ready to be done. I stamped a sentiment from one of the new layering stamps right there in the center. And I just really loved the way that this came out and came together. It was really fast and can be put together in a matter of minutes. For my next card, I'm doing a very similar thing, but I'm using a couple different colors and I'll be coming in from the top. So it'll look like the leaves are hanging down. Now I have used a four by five and a quarter piece of cardstock and I have stamped the first layer of my leaves just like I have the last time, but this time I used a very light gray color of ink. Now I'm going to use several different colors for these other hanging leaves. And again, all of that is listed in the description and on my blog, but I'm using some pinks and purples. And then finally, I'm using one really dark purple color for a center leaf that you'll see in just a minute. But I just really like the idea of doing the same type of technique as before, but adding a few different colors just to add a little bit more interest. And of course you can choose any color. So if you wanted to make this a masculine card, you could definitely use more greens or blues rather than these pinks and purples. And I think that that would actually make a really fantastic uh, masculine card. And I'm a little upset I didn't think about it actually. <laughs> So here is the finished product of this card. I added lots of little gems up inside the leaf, the hanging leaves, because I just thought it went really well. I added It's Cool to Be Kind on a piece of gray cardstock and then matted that on black just to make it pop a little bit more. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see lots more inspiration from me. As always, links to all of the products and links to my blog post, which is part of the Altenew release blog hop are all in the description. Thank you so much again for stopping by and I'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.